Welcome to our newsletter mini-series, Inventor Back to Basics. We're going to be covering some of the basics of Inventor that many users either don't know or have easily forgotten about over the years. And we're going to be covering this over a series of newsletters. So you'll see part one of two, part two of two, maybe even three part mini-series covering the different sub-environments inside of Inventor, including sketches, part modeling, assembly modeling, and drawings. So one of the first best practices you can implement is setting your sketch environment to give you more graphical information letting you know you're inside a sketch. It's very easy to get confused sometimes when you're working on a more elaborate model. You might end up accidentally editing a sketch instead of editing a feature. So the easiest way to do that is when you edit a sketch you can control what information is displayed and you can do that under the tools ribbon, application options, on the sketch tab. There's a checkbox in the display section to either display the axes or the grid lines. It's a personal preference for this. But you'll notice when you turn on something as simple as the axes, you get a very large display area showing you you're inside a sketch. Even though you may not see the sketch geometry or the dimensions, that's your first visual flag that you're editing a sketch either on purpose or by accident. So it can help eliminate some confusion and actually reduce your lead time. Another best practice you can implement is utilization of the project geometry feature. The project geometry feature actually can grab the center point of your part origin and project it to your active sketch. It is best practice to have every sketch fully constrained and dimensioned whether that's using all dimensions to lock down the geometry or a mixture of constraints and dimensions. So what we have here is an active empty sketch and you'll notice at the center there is a yellow square. Now the color of the square is going to change based on your display options, your color background. But basically what you're looking at is a projected copy of the center point. It happens to the best of us when you're working. Sometimes you will accidentally delete this. It's easy to get back other than using the undo command. You can always go back to the project geometry command expand your origin folder, select the center point, and that's it. Right click and OK, you've got your projected center point back on your sketch. Again, part of the best practice is to locate your sketch geometry relative to that projected origin. Whether it's centered around it or at one extreme corner or the other, that's entirely up to your workflow. But what you're intending to do is not only lock down the size of your sketch geometry, but also its location in space. And that location is relative to that 0, 0 projected origin point. So using dimensions or constraints, you can locate that geometry, lock it down, the color will change to show you it has been fully constrained, and in the lower right hand corner you'll see a note that states fully constrained. So as mentioned in the previous best practice tip, you want to have every sketch fully constrained and dimensioned. You don't want any geometry to be able to move or float around when you start making edits. Looking at the sketch we have here, we have a thickness defined, but you'll notice some of the lines are a darker blue while some are a lighter green. Again, these color options will change based on your modeling background scheme. Looking at this particular sketch, I can apply a dimension to set the thickness but I've still got some geometry that can still move. An easy way to figure out what geometry can move is down across the bottom you have a series of status icons. One of those icons displays the degrees of freedom. So when you turn on that icon it will show you on each piece of geometry how that geometry can move. So looking at this piece here it can tell me that piece can rotate. So what I can do is either apply an angle dimension if the line segment happens to be at an angle or in this case it needs to be parallel so I'll just apply a parallel dimension. But in this case the line needs to be parallel so I will apply a parallel constraint. Done. Now my sketch is fully constrained using constraints and dimensions.